Jesus, the King of Kings is He. together this morning. Talk about Jesus more and more. Blessed be his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, friends. You're glad to be here. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn with me. Reading from the book of Psalms familiar scripture chapter 150 it says praise God in the sanctuary praise him in his mighty acts praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the cymbal and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with the loud cymbals. Praise him with the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's just lift our hands and give him praise. Let's just worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, we worship you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you, Lord. We come with a great expectation in our hearts, Lord. We came together with excitement, Lord, knowing that you're about to do a tremendous work among us, Lord. That you're going to continue what you started in us, Lord. Lord, this morning we pray that your Holy Spirit will just engulf us, just surround us, just come in and through our lives, Lord. Go from bench to bench, from pew to pew, from person to person, Lord. Lord, we pray that you have your perfect will. Lord, I pray that you anoint the singers, the musicians, the officers, the helps, the governments, everyone under the sound of our voices, Lord. Lord, everyone connected to us on the internet right now, Lord. Lord, everyone that will see this tape and see this message, Lord, I pray that their lives will be changed and transformed forever, that this will be a turning point, that we can look back on this day and know you were here and you did great things among us, that you started a great work among us, that lives were changed and transformed, that people were set free, that people were delivered, that a revival is burning in our hearts, Lord. Lord, I pray that you come now in a special way. We pray that as we praise you and as we worship you, that you will fill this temple, Lord. Lord, that we be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And the church say, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand of praise. Adore you. 
let's just lift our hands right now glorify thy name in all the earth glorify thy name glorify thy name Adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth. Let's sing it together. Glorify thy name. Glorify. the praise amen yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord we bless you Jesus amen you're glad to be here turn around and greet your brother and sister smile with them let's sing that song God's not dead he is alive Amen, 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 amen. God's 
not dead He is alive Oh God's not dead He is alive I can feel him in my hands The Holy Ghost and power It's keeping me, keeping me alive Keeping me alive Oh, it's the Holy Ghost and power It's keeping me, Jesus says Oh, and there's gonna be shouting on the hills of glory Land of which we heard the story Gonna be shouting on the hills Just one more time World is gonna be shouting on the hills Shouting on the hills Shouting on the hills Oh, when we reach that land of which we heard the story Gonna be shouting. Let's sing it without the music. That's gonna be shouting on the hills of glory. Oh, shouting on the hills when we reach and land. Sorry, that's gonna be shouting on the hills of God. Let me sing this for you. Listen. I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about of his precious blood atoning then I repented of my sins and won you have the victory this morning let's sing victory sing oh yeah. my savior forever me and bought me with his redeeming blood. Oh, he loved me and I knew it. And all my love gives to him. He plunged me oh, to victory. From beneath the let's sing one more verse. I heard about his healing. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing. How he made a lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. Jesus, come on, 
and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me. Let's give him a shout. Victory. Oh, victory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't stop worshiping him now. We're here to create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to drop down. For the Holy Spirit to dwell among us. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. You unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from mine enemies till all my fears are gone let's just sing it one more time you unravel me you unravel me for all mine enemies You surround me with a song Of deliverance For all mine enemies With every hand raised, let's sing back to him Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God, a child of God. I'm no longer to fear. I am God. I'm no longer. I'm no longer afraid to fear. Is that your testimony this morning? I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God So here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that you're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to Here I am, here I am to worship Here I am to bow
music plays, just worship him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. to worship him right here healing rain is pouring down healing rain is pouring down I'm not afraid I'm not afraid healing rain is pouring down healing rain is pouring down I'm not afraid I'm not afraid Healing rain is pouring down Healing rain is pouring down I'm not afraid Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am You're my God you're all together lovely, all together worthy, oh, all together wonderful too. For the last time, here I am, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Oh, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. As a group from Lagos gets ready, I love you forever with all my heart. I love you forever, forever. You're my king. But if your hand raised, let's just sing it. I'll serve you. I'll serve you forever, forever. With all of my heart. I'll serve you forever. Forever, you're my king. With 
all of my heart I love you forever forever you're my king let's just give him a hand of praise Amen, amen, amen. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Let me have your seats. Yes, we're going to sing a song somehow, some way. I know you'll be blessed. Amen, church. Amen. God bless you. Our testimony this morning, somehow, some way, we're going to make it by the grace of God. Amen. Some said we won't make it. Some said we won't be here today. But I say, united, hand in hand, we're going to make it by the grace of God. We'll make it to the other side. Amen. Amen. Brother Bram said it'll be a super race. It'll be a super church. As she nears the headstone don't look at the side attraction the prop first words cannot fail amen. we'll make it to the other side amen. god richly bless you amen
appreciate that song let's give the lord a hand of praise you're gonna make it no matter what the devil says no matter what the opposition might say no matter what anybody might think we're gonna have the victory blessed be the wonderful name of the lord let's sing that song will you be ready Jerusalem just like John will you be ready will you be ready will you be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John I want to be ready I want to be ready I want to be ready walk in Jerusalem turn around tell somebody I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like. Oh, will you be ready? Oh, will you be ready? Will you be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John? Now this morning. It's my pleasure, my privilege, my honor to welcome to speak to us none other from Lagos, Nigeria, Brother Olu Omotoyimbo. Brother, we love you. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem. Shake your neighbor's hand. Give that testimony to somebody. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. Oh, I want to be ready. Oh, one more time. Will you be ready? One final time, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. Hallelujah. Let, let me. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated for a few minutes. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Are you happy? Amen. Well, before I bring my greetings, let's stand up to our feet. Let's, let me read my scriptures. Um, if you have a Bible, I'd like to invite your attention to Genesis chapter 1 and uh, Revelation chapter 12 and Leviticus 23.
Genesis chapter 1, I read verse 2 through verse 5. And that's where I get my title from this morning. Genesis chapter 1, um, I begin to read from verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And that's where my title is from. My title, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. 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 Let's go right back to Revelation. From Genesis right down to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, and this speaking about the war in heaven. I read verse 7 through verse 11. And if you have a marker, you can go to Leviticus 23, verse 33 through 36. Revelation 12, I read from verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was the place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Amen. Finally, our theme scripture for the convention, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33 through verse 36. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, the fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work therein. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy words. Amen. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads and want to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for grace to be here again this morning. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless your word. We have read your word. Your word is already blessed. And we pray you'll bless the preaching of your word this morning, Father. Bless the believers and friends within our gates this morning. We'll be careful at the end of yourself to give you all the praise and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. My title one more time, um, from Genesis chapter 1 there. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank God to be here today. Amen. Are you happy? Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Raymond, what a blessing. Where is Brother Raymond at? I understood Brother Ray to know I'm fine up here. God bless you, Brother Ray. That was a tremendous meeting last night. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry I missed the song service. I really wanted to be here to... to dance in the room there because last night was truly outstanding but that's what the kind of convention God has given us here we've had a great outstanding convention and if we had to go home now if you had to go home from the first service it was worth it all Amen. and for me personally I want to be thankful to, I'm thankful to God for being here because this was one convention that was I was not supposed to be considering so many things but I thank God God made a way and we thank God to be here Amen. so on behalf of my wife and family and our church in Lagos, a portion of who is here. I want to thank Brother Ovid, my dear friend Brother Ovid, for the invitation to be here. And um, Brother Ovid was, uh, was saying yesterday about he and Brother Robledo, they've been together for a long time. And we've been together for a long time. Uh, I was in the group, but I was invisible. So <laughs> we grew up together, and I remember, you know, with Brother Ovid, we've been with Brother. Michael McMyers house in, you know, in New York, in Brooklyn. I know boys together sleep on the floor together and just chat together. And we all had, I mean, a whole lifetime ahead of us. And we have been friends through 
thick and thin of it, and we are so thankful to be here. But Obi, thank you for the invitation to be here. Amen. Like I said before, I was here when the church was dedicated May the 5th, 1996, and uh, our brother Ayo, who's passed on to glory, and I were going to come here for the Saturday night service and the Sunday morning service, but somehow we got in just as the time, about the time the Sunday, Saturday evening service was finishing. So we ended up coming all the way, like Brother uh, Solomon said yesterday, all the way from Nigeria for just one service. So some of our folks just got in last night. So I told them, once you can make it for one service, that's fine. Because I came here for one service before, and I got a blessing too. So we are so thankful to be here, Brother Ovid. And I want to thank you and the great church in uh, um, um, Trinidad, um, Sangre Grande. Now, where is Arima? That's where you live, right? Because I get mixed up, you know. I get mixed up Arima and Sangre Grande. So um, thank you for the, the great church here, the, the sweetness, the, the love, the hospitality is way over, above, and beyond. I want to thank you so very much. And Brother Isaac and his dear wife, Karen. Um, well, Isaac was with us in, in, in Ghana recently for a youth meeting. And I was telling the folks that, you know, um, I, tell, I said everywhere, so maybe Brother Ovi would have a real think sometime and give me some, um, some paternity rights, you know. <laughs> because I tell him all the time that Brother Isaac, Brother Isaac I consider him a son. But yesterday, Brother Conte joined the free and said he also considers Brother Isaac his son. <laughs> so three of us, I don't know how we're going to do it now. So, but Brother Isaac is a tremendous young man that's been a blessing down through the years to so young people everywhere. I love you, Isaac, and your dear wife, Karen, and I'm so very, very proud of you. My young people have been telling me for years, bring Isaac, bring Isaac, bring Isaac. So we're able to do it this year, and he... He actually was in Nigeria after Africa Coast, and then we were together also in Ghana. So, but I'll be don't be surprised if I say that, you know, it's my time to have him for some time, you know. <laughs> so, so, to all the ministers and the brethren and the church that are here, I want to say thank you for coming. And Brother Ovi wanted me to be sure to, to on his behalf, to greet all the brothers and sisters, the pastors, the ministers who are coming here for the first time today. On behalf of Pastor Ovid, um, Sister Anne Marie, we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring the invitation to be here, and thank you for coming. God richly bless you. Because being Sunday morning, you have your own services to go to, but you will leave that to come here. Pastor Ovid says thank you. So, and for the rest of the believers who are here, I want to say thank you for being here. And for my mission brethren, Brother Chandler, I can't, I can't say enough about what your message did for me. And... For the convention generally because I believe that you know um, the host pastor has something in his heart and Brother Ovid is not speaking but God got you to get the right message the right quotes and talking about that PowerPoint I was trying to do some I'll try to do some this morning so yeah I was trying to do it so I was sure I'll get the PowerPoint and I'll get it there and I'll just I'll just be like Brother Peter you know so but it didn't quite work out for me <laughs> Brother Robledo I think said yesterday was trying to get the thing and said no this is not working so he left it so it didn't quite work out for me, so, um, because they were asking me for my I mean, title and all that. So I feel I'll have that on the PowerPoint, but it didn't quite work out. So I had in some raw sheets and things like that. So, but Peter, I need to take some tutorials, okay? But the Ovid has been trying to convert me from this paperwork to this technology thing for years. So you might have a very tough student on your hands. But that was really tremendous, Brother Peter. It was representation, but it was outstanding. 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 And our folks in Lagos, many of them saw it, but they played that in church this morning for a morning service. I understand the whole church was blown apart. And they won their feet throughout for the tremendous blessing of the message. And the quotes you had, I mean, he set the tone for the convention. I want to say, Brother Peter Chandler, God, we should bless you. We're together again. God bless Brother Chandler. Amen. Amen. And And Brother Isaac, Brother Isaac, the spare tire. <laughs> I told Isaac that, you know, for a very well-tuned car, many times the spare tire is in a speak and span shape. The spare tire many times is better than the real tire. And that was what happened on Friday night. Brother Isaac, that was tremendous. That was, that was outstanding. I was telling my wife, Brother Isaac is a real asset to Brother, Brother Theo, really. I mean, both as a son and as a co-worker in church, as a stunt pastor, 
because you can get him in anytime. If you want to get me in to do a service that's not my service, you're not going to get me to do it. <laughs> so I was thinking, Brother Johnny was going to, but Brother Isaac can call him at a moment's notice and he just feel and give you a really great service. Brother Isaac, God bless you. Really proud of you. Really proud of you. And yesterday morning, Brother Jesse Robledo. Nah, Brother Jesse, we still love you. We'll always do. Amen. Amen. And Brother Jesse, you know, memories just come back to me, you know, our time together, growing up together, you know, young men, and just, you know, being together, and you coming to Nigeria with Brother Theo, just unmarried to Rebecca, and being a blessing to us, and the impact of those meetings for those three years, are still there with the people. Many people tell me that, not just in words, many people tell me that was it for them Amen. to really, you know, understand what the message was about and you left all that. You and Brother Theo will sacrifice your Christmas periods, you know, where you could be with your families and come to be with us. I want to say thank you. We'll never forget that. We'll never forget that. <laughs> Amen. I know a lot of water is passing down the bridge, but Brother Jesse, like you said yesterday, it's been worth it all. Amen. Amen. And thank you for the message yesterday. Thank you for those good old songs. I love that too. I tell my young people, these, these new songs, I don't even understand them. I don't, I don't even hear what they are saying. Give me those old songs. Give me those old songs. So I, I thank you, brother, brother, brother JC, for giving me some, some backbone behind my back so I can face them some more, you know. Because some of their songs, I don't even know what they're saying. Are they Christian songs? I'm not even sure. <laughs> so, but that was really tremendous yesterday, brother, brother JC. Thank you so very much. And last night, brother Raymond Thompson. Brother Ray. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Ray, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed that spot, you know. <laughs> I remember the last time we were together, you know, in Ivory Coast. When Brother Ray got in the pulpit. I, I want, Brother Ray, sleeves rolled up. Ready for battle. You want to fight Satan? Elohim is ready. God's son is ready. So I like to see when he rolls up those sleeves. And I always miss it. When we're in Ivory Coast, when he was rolling up this, as he told me, that's the time. So... <laughs> So I, I saw it that time. So I wish I stood by Isaac last night. And I felt I'm going to know when Brother Ray is going to hold up his But I guess so distracted. I was writing my, my title and all that. And before I looked at it, the sleeves were already rolled up. <laughs> but that was tremendous last night, Brother Ray. That was absolutely outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Um, 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 I mean, it's so strange that we've come so quickly to the last day of the convention. And um, they've been telling me and Brother Johnny yesterday that Sunday's coming. <laughs> Sunday's coming. So it's Sunday now. So I, I'm telling Brother Johnny, Sunday night is coming. <laughs> I'm telling Brother Johnny, Sunday night is coming. So Brother, Brother Jesse, thank you for that clip. Sunday is coming. So we are here on Sunday, and Sunday means a resurrection to us. Sunday means victory. Sunday means deliverance. Sunday means we can face any challenge. Sunday means a brand new day. Sunday means the sun is here. Amen. Thank God for Sunday. Amen. God richly bless you. Amen. So this morning, amen. I just want to put my shoulder at the wheel and say a few words out of the scriptures. And my title again, I said is, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And we've been in the meetings and we've heard a lot about the eighth day holy convocation. And brother, uh, brother Ovid, you know, told us how that came to him, pure inspiration. He didn't even think of it. It's not a subject he's studied so long, but God said it's the holy convocation. And brother Peter Chandler picked it up and set us all on the right path. And everybody's been in the meeting. And I'm sure like you are thankful to God you are in this convocation. Yeah. Now, what is the convocation? I mean, in Nigeria and in, in the... Um, I don't know about outside of Africa, but in West Africa generally, when universities and colleges do their degree award programs, they call it like a convocation. Like a convocation is a, an assembly, a large assembly where a lot of people gather. 
and maybe awards and rewards are going to be given out where people are gathered together. I know the Americans call it commencement ceremonies. I don't know what they call it here, but that's a convocation where people are gathered together. It's a coming together of people. And this is a holy convocation. And it's an eighth day holy convocation. So it's a bit specific. Now, what happens in a convocation? The Bible lets us know that. The Bible lets us see that. Leviticus 23, we read, let's just see what happens in a convocation. And follow me this morning. Uh, 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 the preacher already preached the word. So uh, I'm just trying to, you know, add my, <laughs> I put my shoulder to the wheel. So um, Brother Jesse said, he's a long whining preacher. I don't think you can take that title from me, Brother Jesse. <laughs> don't even try. Don't try. I'm long and whining. Sometimes I wonder, Brother Olu, what is wrong with you? What are you even saying? So I uh, just pray for me that I don't, I don't be, end up being long and whiny today, but I'll try, I'll try. But you know, what happens in a convocation? Because when you know what happens in a convocation, then we know what we are looking for here. We know what we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be looking for here, and we can, with boldness, go for it. Amen. In the convocation from Leviticus, I just try to, you know, uh, 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 see as I go along, what happens in the convocation? God told Moses, Get the people together, 15th day of the seventh month. I think the first month is April, so this will be like the 15th of October, uh, uh, which, was the, which is the seventh month. And get the people together for an assembly. And seven days, they will have this assembly. And on the eighth day, he said, the first day will be a holy convocation to you. And you shall do no serve our work therein. It's not a suggestion. It's not an idea. It's a command. You shall do no serve our work therein. Amen. And every single day of those uh, uh, seven days, the first day, and then add seven more days, you shall have a, a, a holy convocation. Amen. And then on the eighth day, will be similar to the first day. And on that eighth day, he added some more instructions to it. He said, you'll do no server work, but he also said, amen, it's a solemn assembly. Amen. Now, this is solemn not as in mourning. It's in solemn as in serious. Amen. It's in solemn as in, it's not a place to take, don't take it lightly. Don't take this assembly lightly. We are here for, for serious business. Amen. We're not here. It's not a solemn assembly like somebody has died and we are mourning. No, it's a serious assembly. We're not playing more games here. That's why we call this assembly. Glory to God. Amen. Can I take off my jacket? Glory. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. So he said, he said, it's a solemn assembly number one number two he said you shall offer an offering unto the lord yes. he's wanting to offer an offering but he qualified the offering he said you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the lord can somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. like brother ray said brother Ovi said can i have a shout in the house can i i can hear you can i have a shout in the house yeah. amen you may be seated an offering made by fire. Amen. We put some fire under the offering. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. When you offer an offering and put some fire in it, that makes it a sacrifice. Amen. And you know the only person that offers a sacrifice to the Lord is a priest. Amen. So in this holy convocation here, you come here with a recognition that you are a priest unto the Lord to have your offering, your sacrifice to offer to God. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Come on, you priests of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Now let's talk a little bit about this. Let's talk a little bit about this priesthood. Let's talk about about this priesthood here. Because you know, a priest offers a sacrifice unto the Lord. So when God says, each one of the household of Israel and each one of us here will offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, is a recognition that we are priests unto the Lord. And doesn't the Bible say we are kings and priests unto the Lord and we shall reign on the earth? So somebody letting you understand, are we run about that time? Somebody letting you understand 
this is what is this what this holy conviction is about yes. to tell me to get on my ash heap you are a priest unto the lord you are a king unto the lord you got power you got authority you got dominion that's what god told me to tell the people get off your ash heap get off your morning spots hallelujah stand on your feet you are going to offer an offering made by fire you are a priest come on you priest of the lord hallelujah glory glory to god amen 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 you may be seated and then every priest is known by the offering or sacrifice he offers now jesus christ our lord is called the high priest of our confession in other words what he offers to god is our confession he takes our confession and offer it to god that's how he becomes the high priest of our confession whatever we confess he offers it to god and the high priest makes sure to make sure he makes sure we get whatever we confess hallelujah so in this holy convocation here you are going to get what you confess your confession is your sacrifice your confession is your sacrifice and whatsoever you confess the high priest stands there to offer it to god hallelujah and that's why in this holy convocation here there is no negative talk like brother ray was telling last night there's no weakness there's no i can't there's no these not walking out no sir whatsoever you confess the high priest takes it to the lord be careful be careful what you say because your high priest is just going to make sure you get what you what you asked for amen, amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah so in this holy convocation here the high priest god is making sure our speech is going to change our attitude is going to change everything is going to change we're going to defy everything else where there is weakness if you say lord i'm so weak everything is so going wrong for me that's your confession that's your sacrifice you are bringing and that's what the high priest takes to the lord be careful now because the high priest says as you have said in my ears so will i do unto you yeah. amen hallelujah yeah. a holy convocation glory. oh glory to god amen 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 oh brother joy good to see you I haven't seen in a long time. We we'll still catch on fellowship. We have some little fellowship, but we we'll still catch on fellowship. But you appreciate Brother Joel in the songs. Amen. Amen. And I was telling him I was privileged to see, you know, when he led songs the first time. As a 15 year old, I think it was, you know. And he's remained, he remained faithful in the house of God ever since. Amen. So, anyway, so. This holy convocation here, those four things are supposed to happen. A gathering together of the people, because it's assembly, solemn assembly, is a serious hour. Not for people who are not made up in their minds to go, not for people who are, you know, just loitering around and lolly gagging around, or not for people who you have to tell them, come on, don't you see what's going on? No. God tell, told Moses to tell the people that. And God Himself made sure that each person not moses going around each person he was to call the assembly and tell them this is the word of the lord to them and each person was going to sit up and get on the toes i know it's a tippy toe message it's no time to fool around here it's time to cut off every foolishness it's time to stay on our toes it's time to know that the holy spirit is here with us to bring to pass every divine promise that we amen hallelujah amen so it's a solemn assembly amen it's a serious hour amen tell the people amen whatever they confess that's their sacrifice so you say what do i confess saint mark 11 jesus said whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you shall have them that's number one believe in your heart then number two you sh whatsoever you say you shall have what you say 
Too many times we live under privilege. Too many times we just believe this gospel doesn't work. But this gospel works. This gospel works. And let me prophesy. You are going to leave this convention here. You are going to find out you are in a holy convocation. And at the holy convocation and all the things that happen in a holy convocation are going to follow you every single day of your life from here on out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh hallelujah you may be seated amen and then number four in a holy convocation he said you do no servile work therein the word servile what it means is is the kind of work, the kind of labor that slaves do. It's the kind of labor that people who are in prison do. So God drops down a holy convocation to break your chains of slavery, to break your chains of bondage. That's what it represents. I don't know what you are in bondage to this morning. I don't know what prison house you are in. But the Holy Spirit that calls for the meetings has been showing you through the convention that he's here to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain in the name of Jesus Christ. And we have the authority of the Holy Spirit to break every chain. Whatever demon, whatever spirit, whatever chain has you bound this morning that has not been broken yet in the meetings, it shall be broken today. Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming and Sunday is here. Sunday is here to break every chain because you shall do no slave work in this day. Oh, hey. You're not a slave. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of the king. You are not a slave. Glory. Glory to God, amen. You may be seated. Please do me a favor, turn to your neighbor, tell them, you shall do no server work. Because you are not a slave. slaves we are sons and daughters of the most high God shake up the slaves shake break the chains of bondage the Holy Spirit is in the house and you are free today no demon no spirit is powerful enough to hold you in bondage this anointing that you feel in these meetings here is too much for any spirit any devil it paralyzes Satan Satan is paralyzed this morning. You may be seated. So you begin to change your confession. Glory. If you feel weak, change your confession. Let the weak say, I am strong. Who told you I'm weak? Who told you I'm weak? You are living in the past somewhere. But I'm in a holy convocation. My confession to my high priest, I am strong. I am strong. You're free, you're not going to make it. I am going to make it. I already made it. Before the foundation of the world, I already made it. You have fear, confess courage. You have pain, confess healing. Amen. You may be seated. Glory. Glory, glory to God. Amen. Amen. 
So if you are sick this morning, before the prayer lantern, I begin to confess your healing. That's how it comes. The high priest hears it and will make your body obey your confession. If you are weak, confess strength. If you are afraid, confess courage. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. And you shall have what you say. You may be seated. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. I know the devil, the devil sneaks around and says, you are confessing a lie. You are confessing a lie. Oh no, I'm not. Oh no, you are not. Oh no, you are not. You know why? Because you are only affirming that your confession is based upon faith in a finished work. He already did the work for you. Hallelujah. And you are confessing what he did for you already. Glory to God, amen. Let the weak say, I am strong this morning. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the bound say, I am delivered. Praise the Lord. And we shall do no cyber work therein. Amen. Cyber work. Let me see that. Cyber work. Suggest slavery, suggest prison. Now, there are so many people, young people in particular, are held bound by sin. But you know, too many of us also are in prison of our own making, of our own choosing. Whatever the source of your bondage or prison, the Holy Spirit, this spirit is here, says, You shall do no cyber work therein. Some of us are so full of pity for ourselves. You know, we're in prison of jealousy, prison of self pity all kinds of prisons prison of ignorance we are held in prison some have been by their church by their group by their revelation by their inspiration they're held in prison by that and they must live up to certain expectations they must live up to some certain things that the group places upon them some are in prison to facebook and social media all kinds of prisons we put on ourselves but the holy spirit says you shall from hence for do no cyber walk therein because deliverance has come to you amen over this weekend here and it's up to you to take it and walk out free glory to god amen you may be seated amen amen let me read you a quote here for brother branham it's been read already but let me just go over it again uh, you may be seated on future home um let's get a little bit into this um this holy convocation here because said there's another holy time coming it means there was one before so we want to try and trace you know what this holy convocation is all about and what it means for you and i on the future home brother bam said here and god made the earth and labor six days and rest of the seventh was only a type of time time but i've just said here we become eternal amen so this time and this eternal so let's find out where this holy convocation is at whether it's in time or eternal all right so where's your type now you say you are typologies you've run out of types now no i haven't let's just find out if we have let's go to leviticus back in the 23rd chapter of leviticus now i want you to notice in leviticus where we were was that last sunday this is what gave me the idea right there the 23rd chapter of Leviticus and the 26th verse. And it's been read over and over in the commission. And I'll just read again this morning. Now remember, there's seven feast days. The feast of trumpets, the feast of tabernacles, the feast of the sheaf waving. All, all this here, there's seven great feast days. That, that was only a type of the seven church ages. Amen. Amen. And you remember how many Sabbaths there was between one and the other. Seven Sabbaths between Pentecost and the trumpets, which were seven church ages. And there were seven feast days. That represent the seven church ages. Keep your numbers running. Yeah. Say, well now, Brother Branham, you don't run out. You got your seven. Yeah. All right. Let's take the last feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now notice here on the 36th verse. Seven days shall you offer offerings made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation and a burst into prophecy. Because William Branham left us a testimony in prophecy you gotta watch what that prophet is saying let's see some of these guys running their mouth on the internet and different things here 
you don't understand Brother Branham's message. Yes. This was a prophet and more than a prophet. Like yes. Brother Jesus said yesterday, Amen. And he broke into prophecy. There's another holy time coming. And that lets us know right away there was a holy time before. And if we find out what happened in that holy time, how they got there, we'll know what we're supposed to expect and what we're supposed to go for in this holy time here. Because it runs in shadows and, tab it runs in shadows and types. Amen. Glory. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 All right. Let's take the Feast of the Tabernacles. Seven days you offer offering to the Lord. And the eighth day, holy convocation. There's another holy time coming. And you shall often offer me by fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly, and you shall do no salve work therein. Now we got an eighth day. There's only seven days. But we always speak of the eighth day. Amen. Holy convocation. Notice, do no work in it. The eighth day are what? Back to the first day. Why? It speaks of eternity. Amen. As she rose around without a stopping place. Or oh, do you see it? Notice, it was also upon this eighth day. Last day, feast day of the tabernacle. Notice after that. After the last feast day, after the last church age. After the last complete seven days upon the earth. After the millennium. Then this holy convocation comes. Amen. Like Brother Jesus said, the millennium is still day number seven. Amen. But this holy conviction is the eighth day, which speaks of eternity. Remember, this is the Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles, gathering places. Amen. Where? In the millennium. The Bible said they shall build houses, they shall inhabit. Amen. But in the new earth, he has already went and prepared the place. It's built. We have nothing to do with the building of it. Amen. Eternal. Oh, I just love that word. My, a holy convocation. The eighth day, which is only seven days. How do you have seven days and you're talking about eight days? How do you have seven days and you're talking about an eighth day holy convocation? When God hangs around like that, it means he's hiding something from Satan. But in that hidden thing is a revelation to you and I. And that's why he sent us a prophet. The prophet Elijah to bring these things open to us. And he already revealed every mystery. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Oh my. Not in seven days. Only has to do with the old creation. World time. Seven days. That's the millennium. The rest day. As God labored six days, rest of the seventh. The church labored six days and rest the seventh. But you are still in time element. I ain't speaking of the eternal, Brother Branham said. But you see, there's no such a thing as eight days. You don't have day number eight. It goes back to the first day again. See the first day. The Sabbath speaks of the old law, which was to pass away. The keeping of a Sabbath, which passed away. Amen. Isaiah the 19th chapter said, I believe 28 19, precept must be upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Hold fast to thou what's good. For with stammering lips and all the tongues will I speak to these people. And here is the rest. You enter into life, not keeping a day or shadow. Paul said over here in Hebrews chapter 4, you keep days and shadows and things like that. I'm scared of your experience. See, we don't pass into certain days and orders. You've passed from death unto eternal life. Not days and times. You've passed into eternity. That's the holy convocation. You've passed into eternity. That's the holy convocation. Because that's number eight. So this holy convocation here has to do with time. Has to do with your school, your work, your home, your country. Has nothing to do with that. This eight day holy convocation is all about eternity. Hallelujah. Like brother Isaac said, the law of the eighth day is not like the law we use in time. The law of the eighth day is so superior, so above. Amen. amen. Oh, read, oh God, amen. Oh, brother, amen. You've passed into eternity. That's the only convocation. Seven days. Amen. Amen. We'll pass away. As I've said, we'll change to another. Eight days deals with new creation, not old creation. Eight days is no creation. For it was on the eighth day that the Lord raised from the dead. Now watch Brother Branham. He'll show you the eighth day. And he's trying to show you the eighth day in scripture. The eighth day in scripture. So you'll know what he's talking about. 
Oh, so you will begin to understand when he says you are not a creature of time, you are a creature of eternity. Yeah. Like brother raised the last night, that's why the Holy Spirit dropped down. When he said that you got an eternal quality to you, yeah. you got this sheet of paper, and you, you, it has a value, you put it on the ground, squash it around, still the same value, because it has an eternal value to it. The devil might have beaten you back and blue, back and blue, back and blue. It hasn't changed your worth. It hasn't changed your value. Oh, no, it has not. Oh, no, it has not. Glory to God. Amen. For it was on the eighth day that our Lord raised from the dead. There is your other convocation. Amen. So when Jesus raised from the dead on Sunday morning that first Easter resurrection morning it was a holy convocation and since that day since that time every time we come to church on a Sunday morning on a Wednesday night because we are celebrating the resurrection of our risen resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are in a holy convocation we are living by another set of rules amen we are living in eternity by an eternal set of rules Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is your other convocation. Not considering the Sabbaths at all. Or the Feast of the Sabbaths. Feast of these and the Feast of the Pentecost. Jesus raised from the dead for our justification on the eighth day. Hallelujah. After the seven Sabbaths or seven days. Seven church ages. Jesus raised from the dead. Eighth day. Which is the holy convocation, see? Which is the first day. Oh, glory to God, amen. You don't pass through time and drop into eternity again. Not keeping of days and keeping of Sabbaths and new moons and things like that. But a pass, change your form. Not annihilated. Glory, but pass from death unto eternal life. Oh, what the Bible does teach us. Pass from death to life. Proverbs 29. And back over yonder at the beginning. Where the tapos was made in Eden. When man came to the earth and he fell. Hallelujah. A little lamb shed its blood. Ah. That spoke of the great lamb was coming to shed his blood. Hallelujah. Calvary raised the cross. That tied to the Old Testament to them who, who justify were looking for it. Amen. And in this new dispensation now the coming of the Lord. As the new earth the rope. Of salvation the blood the redeemed power that i'm talking about and through the same system has been both man and the earth will raise right up into eternity again and the lake of fire will consume everything that's ungodly and unprecedented to it do you see it nor is the eighth day jesus rich for a sanctification the eternal king with the eternal kingdom to be baptized into to eternal life not seven days had nothing to do with any of the days is speaking of another eternal coming speaking of an eternal time the wall that I'm speaking of. And notice after 50 days or 7 Sabbaths from there. Again there come another holy convocation. Amen. What happened? The Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. Amen. A holy convocation. Amen. On the 7th day or 8th day rather. Fell on the 8th day. Was 7 Sabbaths later. And his resurrection. After his resurrection. And so it's been 7 times that again. <laughs> bring it right back around to the first day of the week again. There is your holy convocation not have anything to do with the literal things it's beyond the literal it's beyond the natural it's beyond time it's into the kingdom of god with eternal life with the predestinated that never did begin it never started on any day you wasn't saved on any day you was always saved jesus come jesus just come to redeem that amen but you were saved from the beginning because you had eternal life to begin with can the people say amen? amen? Oh, hallelujah. There's another holy time coming. Amen. amen. You may be sitting on the prophet to get right back to Eden. Let's get right back to Eden. Let's follow this holy convocation here. God come down in Eden, created the world. Number one, day one, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that it was good. And God took the light and separated the light from the darkness. Amen. And call the light day and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Normally, here we are today. We start the day with the morning first. And then we end the day in the evening time. 
But in God's order here, he's changing it all through Genesis. The evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. That's going to show you the power that's, that's laid in a holy convocation. When we come to church, every single time you are in a holy convocation. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in Genesis 1, God began the creation. And number 2, day 2, he created some more and then he said the evening and the morning were the second day and all the way down to the sixth day the evening and the morning were the fourth day the fourth day the fifth day the sixth day ah. and on day number seven Michael, Michael. the bible said god rested on the number seven and we don't hear any more about that we don't hear what happened to adam what you adam was created on the sixth day what happened to him? Did he stay in the sixth day? Did he go into the seventh day? Or what happened? Here's what happened here. Glory yeah. to God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said, the first day and the eighth day are the same thing. The eighth day goes back to the first day. So if you don't understand my title, that first day there is the first display on the face of the earth of what the holy convocation represents because the holy convocation is eternal but eternity dropped down into time and began to unfold and unveil this great holy convocation to you and i and the first day which is like the eighth day which is eternity shows us what the holy convocation is all about we'll get to it in a minute amen glory to god amen are you following me? Yeah. Can I get a shout in the house? Yeah. Glory to God, amen. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, and the evening and the morning were the first day. <laughs> now, tell your neighbor now, don't do your seat. Look to your neighbor and tell them that. And that is the holy convocation. Yes. We'll put it together for you in a minute. Yes. Amen. So God, because the holy convocation is eternal, yes. not on the earth here. He come down and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He unfolded, unveiled and unfolded progressively yes. what this holy convocation was about. And we find out it's a power in the holy convocation. Is a creative power, is a creative force to come on the face of the earth. Remember, the earth was that form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And in the midst of all that, in that condition, is where God come right down to declare a holy convocation on the face of this earth here. This has started out with a holy convocation and we are going out just the same way. And no devil is going to be able to stop it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you are going to be in that holy convocation. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You may be seated. Glory to God. Amen. Adam was created on day number six. Notice in Genesis 1, like Schofield says, three creations mentioned here. Because in the Antediluvian War, we know about all of that. But when God come down, let there be light. He created the heavens and the earth. Number two, he created animal life. I mean, he created, you know, plant life and sea life. And number three, he created human life. It was a creative force. It was a power. 
that come on the face of the earth to declare this holy convocation. So when Adam, when Adam was living in the Garden of Eden and walking around in the Garden of Eden, what day was he living in? Adam was born on, Adam was created on the sixth day, right? And God on the seventh day rested. So what Adam in the seventh day, or what day was he in? Because after day number seven, God didn't say anymore because God is the eternal. Here's the, here's the understanding here. Here's the revelation here. From what Brother Branham said, not me bringing the revelation. Got no revelation to bring. Brother Branham revealed all the mysteries. Some of the revelations has been, Brother Branham revealed the mysteries. Amen. Every mystery has already been revealed. No new cut. No new mysteries. Amen. Amen. But here's the understanding coming from Brother Branham's words. The seventh day in Eden was still time. So when God rested on the seventh day, it was still in time. And God doesn't live in time. What is the revelation here? Day number seven. Number seven. The rest on day number seven is your passageway. Is your bridge between number six and number eight. That's what bridges you over into eternity. God was showing Adam. You've got to enter into my rest. And when you enter into my rest, you'll break into that eighth day holy convocation. When you break into that eighth day holy convocation, you are on this earth here, but you are eternal. Like Brother Rachel last night, you got an eternal quality to you. And that's why for every young man, every young woman, you can rest until the passing of the Holy Ghost and fire burns into your soul. Hallelujah. God wants to give you the Holy Ghost more than you desire to have the Holy Ghost. You may be seated. So like God, Adam found rest. And by that rest he entered into the eighth day. And live in eternity. So Adam was in Eden, living in the eighth day. He lived an, in eternity in Eden. Yes. Heaven dropped down. The eternal dropped down in Eden. Yes. Adam wasn't living the seventh day in Eden. He was living in eternity. Amen. He was in a holy convocation. Amen. With God and all nature. He was right there. Amen. Heaven. The eternal was reigning in the affairs of men on the face of the earth. And there is your holy convocation. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come with me now. A hundred million years to that eternity. So we'll see what that holy convocation that God dropped down in Genesis was really all about. Come with me, a hundred million years, Brother Benham said. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, you got your speech suit on? Yeah. Got your spiritual thinking jacket on? Yeah. We know these things, nothing new. We've been well taught these yeah. things. Amen. Amen. Just putting the message together for you. Amen. Amen. So day number one to number six was creation. Day number seven was the rest, yeah. the bridge, amen. amen, to bridge between the time and eternity. And Adam passed that bridge, and time to go to rest, glory. and live in eternity, and that holy convocation in the Garden of Eden. Oh, glory to God, amen. 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 Let's go the way back to eternity now to find out what this holy convocation, what it really entailed, because that was where it was in heaven. When all of God's children gathered together yeah. and shouted for joy. Yeah. That solemn, serious assembly. Yeah. It was serious because the disruptor was there. Oh. The devil was there trying to cause some disruption, some dis distraction. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Romans 8, open your Bibles. Hallelujah. 
Romans 8. Let me read for verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We're trying to trace this holy convocation to the original holy convocation. Yes. Try to show you what the holy convocation did and established in the Garden of Eden. The eighth day holy convocation that Adam lived in in Eden. Yes. Amen. And I'm a dear son of God, displaying the power and authority of heaven on the face of the earth. And God come down and create it and unveil this holy convocation. But let's go back and see what it's all about. Where you all started from so you know how to apply this in your own life. Amen. Thank you. Brother. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God who are the call according to his purpose. Let me keep a top of my time here. I'm doing very well. All right. For whom he did for know, he also did predestinate. Watch those words now. Whom he did for know, them he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn among many brethren. The firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. In those two verses, we find the whole gospel story. Amen. You may be seated, please. Let's go a little bit here. Amen. In those two verses, amen, we find foreknowledge. We find election. We find predestination. We find destiny. Amen. And Brother Branham said, foreknowledge looks back to, I mean, election looks back to foreknowledge. And predestination looks forward to destiny. And this scripture here is a very common scripture, very popular scripture for us. Explains it all to you and I. Amen, amen. I'm going to show you in a minute just what it's all about. Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, from, for whom he did foreknow, uh, um, uh, 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 um, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So what comes first is the foreknowledge. Is what comes first. Elohim, dwelling all alone by himself. We always talk about the back part of Elohim's mind. The back part of Elohim's mind. And if there's a back part, there's a front part. Doesn't that make sense? Can you say amen? Can I get a shout in the house? If there's a back part, there is a front part. Now, on the back part of Elohim's mind was his attributes, his being, who he is. That was the Person of Elohim, that was thought, the thinking, that was spirit on the back part of his mind. But in the front part, that's where the foreknowledge is. The foreknowledge, the, no, the prior knowledge, the knowing before it happens. Amen. And the foreknowledge of Elohim, if he was God, he had to know the beginning from the end. He had to know it all before it ever happened at all. Amen, amen, amen. Election looks back to foreknowledge. The foreknowledge comes first. And in the foreknowledge, Elohim knew everything. The foreknowledge was not him. The back part was him. The foreknowledge was just his knowledge of what was going to be on the face of the earth. From Eden right back to Eden again. In there, in the foreknowledge, he knew what was going to be. He knew every life that would be on the face of the earth. Like Brother Mom said, he knew every fly and how many times it would bat its eye. He knew everything. He knew every serpent, every seed, every body that would be on the face of the earth. Like Brother Ray told Isaac yesterday, he knew Brother Paul wasn't going to be here and Isaac was going to take his place in the foreknowledge. He knew everything. In the foreknowledge, he knew every sin, every filth, every ungodliness that would ever take place on the face of the earth. In the foreknowledge. So you know the foreknowledge is not him. That's not his thinking. Just what he knows. No, you didn't hear me. You may be seated. You didn't hear me. Glory, you did not hear me. You may be seated. The foreknowledge... When God 
told Adam, have you ever thought, God told Adam, be fruitful and multiply. Adam was an amateur God on the face of the earth. He was ruling this earth in the place of God himself. Yet when Adam sinned and fell, God said, when he drove the man out, he said, lest the man put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, Lord, come on now. I thought you said Adam was an amateur God like you on the face of the earth. So how come God saying, let the man come and become like one of us, knowing good and evil? Is that for knowledge, Pat? That for knowledge. That's where, the pro that's where your problem is. That's where your problem is. That's where my problem is. That's where the problem of the human race is. That's what the fall got us into. To know good and evil. To try to become God when we are not, when we haven't gone through the processes to know how to handle good and evil. And God kept Adam from it because to before he will get back again, he had to go through a process, a stage, a tutoring, a child training before he will become like God again on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the foreknowledge, that's where the problem is at. You may be seated. And that's where the devil deceives many, many young people in particular, but also older folks like me. Like our dads and moms. The foreknowledge, that's not you. The foreknowledge was in God. The bad path was God. That's where you were hidden. That's where your thought, your gene, your representation by Peter's nation in Elohim was in the back part of his mind. But the foreknowledge, God knew everything that would happen. And like Brother Bram said, he knew who would receive it and who would not receive it. The Bible says, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. God looked all the way down and saw you and I, 2017, and knew we would be here by his foreknowledge. He knew all the sin that would be taking place in part of Spain, in London, New York, Lagos, Freetown, everywhere, all over the face of this earth here, that will be taking place at this present moment. God knew all that, but he knew we would be here in an eight day holy convocation. God knew who would receive it. His foreknowledge knew that. First Peter 1 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Wow. Glory to God. Amen. So God saw you and I struggling, but He saw we will receive it. Amen. And what did He do? What did He do? God reached way down into 2015, 2016, 2017, or whenever it was, and pulled you from that foreknowledge path and put you right into the election. He reached out and pulled you right to the back part of his mind. The foreknowledge is the record of all life that will be on the face of the earth here. Is the record of the good and the bad. Is the knowledge of the good and the evil that will be on the face of the earth. But the back part is the tree of life. The back part is only the good. God's pure thoughts from before the foundation of the world. But the foreknowledge is the good and the evil and the ugly and the bad. And God saw you receive it. He reached way down and pulled you from there. And put you on the back part of his mind. And put your name, put your name in that eternal section on the back part of his mind. Hallelujah. So you might come here and you have a front part 
like the woman caught in the very act of adultery like the woman at the well she had a front part but she also had a back part because elohim had seen her that she was going to receive it that when the messiah will say go call your husband she will say i have none and he will say i that speak unto you i am the messiah and she will say come see a man he knew she would receive it and he took her reached out and took her from the phone like back and put her to the back part of his mind and the back part cancel out the front part and no devil who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect that's the power in election that's the power in your election Elohim already saw you that you are not gonna reject it you are gonna receive it Ore, Ore. and he had enough power enough authority to reach down and take you out of your prostitution take you out of your drugs and push you on the back part of his mind who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justified. You never did in the first place. Never did in the first place. Glory, glory. Amen. You may be seated. The story hasn't ended yet. We are trying to see how this holy convocation, the original one, took place. That's what we're trying to see. You may be seated. For whom he did foreknow and elected them. He foreknew you, you were going to receive it. He took you, no matter what had you bound, no matter what spirit had you bound. The power of election reach down and pull you out of it and cancel out cancel out that life all the record in the book of life the record of your record of good and evil he cancel it out and put in the blood section where you never did in the first place where no devil can accuse you he sees you through the blood who shall lay anything to the charge of god's elect that's the election he took you and put you on the back of his mind let the devil try to follow you there he can't even do it he cannot do it that's the power in your election what shall we then say hallelujah for i am persuaded neither death nor life nor things present and take us away from the love of God that already chose us and elected us in him before the foundation of the world. That's why we are here. That's why we have no fear. You already made it. You have no fear. You are not going to be lost. Your little babies, your little boys and girls might be wondering right now, the bloodhound is after them. The bloodhound is after them. But I read to you last night, the Holy Spirit follows the blood from the book of redemption. The book of redemption on the back part of his mind. Hallelujah! You may be seated. Let me be sure you understand this. The foreknowledge. God's knowledge for knowing before prior knowledge it was a record a record of life god values life so every life on the face of the earth had their record in there of the good and the bad that's why adam when he got in that the devil got in that sphere he can handle the good and the bad he cannot handle it even with the power of election, we struggle with handling the good and the bad. Yeah. See, that brother, 
He's bad. That sister, oh, forget it. I can't even stand her. Oh, that church. Oh, come on. I want to have you go to church there. That's the knowledge of the good and the evil. And the Bible says, for God, be therefore perfect. It's in Matthew 5. As your Father in heaven is perfect. For he makes his son to shine on the just and the unjust. On the good and the evil. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. But Elohim is not finished yet. You may be seated. So when he took you from that record of that life, your record of life, that's the record. The Bible said the books were open and every man was judged out of the things right in the books. The records is a record of life. Every life on the face of the earth, they're going to be judged out of those things that they did because their works are going to follow them. But you, he took you from that and put you on the eternal section where there's another book. Another book, the Lamb's book of life. Which is written in blood. Where your name can never be taken out. Where it was there eternally. Where God's foreknowledge elected you. And the, your record in the book of life cancels out your record in the regular book of life oh hallelujah can somebody shout hallelujah can somebody shout amen oh hallelujah you may remember and remember some of the things that are done in the front part but Jesus with special love forgive me of every one of them Oh, I was guilty all oh, so long. But Jesus dropped the charges because the power of election took me and put me and wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. In the eternal section, never to be erased no more. That's where you are. Oh, hallelujah. And that's where we are going to have this original holy convocation. Oh, come on now, get ready for it. Get ready for it. There's going to be a shot in heaven shortly. Get ready for it. God is getting sons of God from different ages. Paul's age, put them there. Arena said, put them there. Man is there, put them there. Oh, glory! Is my name written there? Oh, yes, your name is written there. He pulled you there. You may be seated. Oh, glory. Glory to God, amen. Moreover, Hallelujah. when he, his funnel legs elected you and pulls you over, he didn't stop there. Oh. Go and do no halfway job. Oh. Nice. Hey. He saw you wanted it. Yeah. But I read, read last night, God wants to save you more than you want to get saved. Yeah. The prodigal son, when he came back to himself, oh. he had got away from himself. He got away from the father first and got away from himself. But when repentance came to him, he came back to himself and went back to the father. When he went back to the father, he didn't have to say, please, father, please, I'm so sorry. The father was waiting. Next stretched out, waiting for his son to come. God wants to save you more than you want to get saved. God wants to deliver you more than you want to get delivered. And if you don't get delivered, you don't get saved, you have to fight your way. To go to hell. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So God don't do no halfway job. Moreover, whom he did for no um, elect, them he also did predestinate. He took care of your past. Now he's going to take care of your future. And predestination is looking forward to your destiny. What's your destiny here? That they might be for whom he did predestinate, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified on the back part of his mind, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 
What does that mean? When he lectured you and put you on his back by the Lamb's Book of Life, he called you, justified you, cleaned you. First Peter 1 says, called, uh, 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 elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkle of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So when he pulls you on the back of his mind, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed you called you sanctified you on the back part of his mind because on the back part is all good and no evil no filth no sin there so he took you and put you there and cleaned you up before the walls ever were formed oh that's the record of you in elohim that's the record of you in elohim oh glory to god amen 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 Moreover, whom he did for no one elect, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Be conformed. Elohim playing with words in the English language. Be conformed. Become formed into the image of his son on the back of Elohim's mind. So Elohim's record of you, you have already been formed into the image of his son. That's a record of you. When you say my name is written there, that's what it means. Your name is written there, standing there in the stature of a perfect man. Hallelujah. And the devil is jealous of you. This was the eighth day, eternal, eternity. Oh man, let me just talk here. Let me leave these notes here. I know what happened. Elohim had these all sealed up before the wars were ever formed. On the back of his man, they were safe, already predestinated, called, sanctified, clean in blood. No sin can stay on you. Hallelujah. No sin can stay on you because you're on the back part of his mind. And then come from the image of his son. Standing there just like his son that he might be the firstborn. Jesus Christ, the Logos, the Word among many brethren. When that was done, what would happen? Elohim on Morphe and become the Logos. And began the work of creation. Already done, decided. First thing the creator was angels, and you were there watching all that. Created angels. You saw this creative power. This creative force created angels to worship him. And you were there. And Lucifer was there too. He was created. You saw him created. Amen. Hallelujah. And you were there. Amen. On the sides of the north. You were there. Amen. Right in the logos. Veiled as a seed. A word seed. A little button of life in the logos. Amen. In the beginning. Because you bypass your theophany. But there you are in the theophany. Spirit, word, body. And began the work of creation. Began the work of creation. Created angels. And the angels began to worship him. For eons and eons of time they worshiped him. And you were there. It's not pre-existence. You were there as a little seed in the Logos. But there, angels represented you. That's where your representation was. Like Brother Chandler read, condemnation by representation. Same way, representation by predestination. It was a predestination, not pre-existence. But you were represented there. Angels represented you. There you were in the Logos, your soul. And angels represented your spirit. In the beginning, God got this thing finished before we ever come here. Totally finished. And there you were, there you were. You were there in the Logos. You were there in the body of Christ. You are there in the body of the Logos. You are there in the Word. And angels represented your spirit. And here's where I want to show you something. Glory. And Lucifer was jealous. You may be seated. You may be seated. Lucifer was jealous. How could he have such a lofty position and still be jealous? But was jealous. 
I don't have to go into all that. That was in Revelation 12. I didn't read verses 1 to 3. The woman was traveling child to bring for the man child. He was jealous of the man child. Who is this child that's also a man? Who is this child that's also a man? He was jealous. Because he's like a baby. Jealousy and feeling bad. Nonsense. Feel like a baby. But seeing this child is like a man. So he had his plans. And that's where you're going to see the different parts of the book of life. And you're going to see that Elohim kept you there. In that eternal section in that Lamb's book of life. And what happened? Lucifer fought. He went run, run heaven with his tail, like Brother Bram said, tail. T A L E. God playing with words in the English language. T A R L. T A L E. Playing with words. Went with his tail to tell tales on God. And got some to believe. And the Bible said he deceived. It's a deception. You know what? You never did in the first place. Even Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, said, that if I do therefore that which I don't want to do, is that it's no longer I that do it. He said, but sin that deceived me. Sin that's working in my members. It was responsible. But when you have a knowledge and an understanding of the book from the back part of Elohim's mind, your mind is enlightened. And the devil can deceive you no more. Adam wasn't deceived. So he can get the spot where he can deceive you no more. So anyway, he went around and gossip sephoric acid in the church against this one against that one against this one against that one we're getting ready for this holy convocation and the devil is going around there and started a war in heaven a war in the church up in heaven and he fraught and michael representing jesus christ wouldn't stand for it the logos wouldn't stand for it he didn't start the fight. We don't start a fight. But we never run from a fight. No, we never run from a fight. Hallelujah. And Michael fought and Lucifer fought. And Michael fought and Lucifer fought. Long story short. Over seven church ages. This war went on. And at the end of the war. What happened? One third of the angels. Were deceived by Lucifer. And Michael said, I won't have this here. He threw them out of heaven. Kick them out of heaven. Uh, that's the power in the kingdom. Kick them out. So you have the power to kick him out of your life. So what happened? What happened? One thought was kicked out of heaven. And there remained two thoughts. A revelation there. One thought Two thoughts means there are three groups here. That's what it means. It means there are three groups here. One group was kicked out. And one group was from the back part. There's this other group here. We don't know where they're coming from. Brother Branham said there are four paths to the book of life. One path is not even written at all. Because forever, O oh Lord, the word is said in heaven. All that happened in the beginning, when Elohim unmorphed to the Logos and created angels, all throughout, that's all that has been happening on the face of the earth. It was previewed before the foundation of the world. And that's what has been happening. And God previewed it there. The fourth group, serpent seed, God has nothing to do with them. Their record is not there at all. But th- this is the foreknowledge playing out now. And in this foreknowledge here, every life is there except the serpent seed. You are there. Those who are kicked out are there. And there's this other mysterious group also is there. Amen. So there are three groups there. 
He had seen you and taken you out of there and put you on the back part of his mind. So you're one group. Other group stood, stood with Lucifer and they were kicked out. That's like the borderline believers. Borderline believers who almost come in. Almost come in. And the cares of life. They got deceived. Like Judas. Come to the borders. And back off. But there's this other group. Who was not deceived. They are not from the back part of Elohim's mind. But they were not deceived. Who are they? They're the foolish virgins. The foolish virgins. They are, not, they are not elected to be in the bride. So they are not from the back part. But they didn't take sides with Lucifer. Religious Christian people. Good people. Good people. They didn't get kicked out. They didn't take their names out of the book. Pentecostal people. Deceived by, you know, our robots and these other different Pentecostal groups. And, you know, we have many of them in Nigeria. I don't remember here. So many of them, you know, who have been taught to believe that they can live worldly and still have Jesus. Who have been taught to believe that they love God in their hearts. They side with God. But they are not predestinated to be in the bride. The foolish virgins. And will take a chance at the great white throne judgment. To enter into life. And another group also there is the Matthew 25 group. They also did not take sides. They formed this second group. Mysterious group. That wasn't kicked out. That was not the bride. There they were, the foolish virgins, religious people, another group, amen, Matthew 25, the sheep nations, who do good things to the bride, who are going to receive eternal life, because of their goodness to the people of God. And then also the 144,000 form part of this group here. That's all that's going to be, that's the second group. They didn't take sides with Lucifer. But they were not predestined to be in the bride. These good people do things that the people in the bride are supposed to do, but they will never do. People in the message, rather, are supposed to, but will never do. Hallelujah. Glory. So what do you have? Three groups. The bride, the foolish virgins group, and the borderline believers. The borderline believers were kicked out. So you have the two thirds, the bride, the foolish virgins that stood with Michael. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Amen. And when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, Elohim was done. Then now the book of life could be written and expressed. And after the war in heaven, the book of life was written and expressed. And forever, O oh Lord, the word is settled and written and expressed in heaven. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And there, there, you saw the bride of God. Saw Lucifer kicked out. Saw the capstone coming up in front of their lives. Saw them grown into the image of the Son of God. Hallelujah. There was a shout in heaven, a shout of victory like never before. And that's where the first holy convocation took place. That's that where the eternity holy convocation took place. It was, it was celebrating a victory. It was celebrating a deliverance. It was celebrating a victory over Satan, over Lucifer and all his works. Oh, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, brother. Brother, amen. Oh, glory. So what happened now? What happened now? The power that cast Lucifer out is the same power that came down on day one. I said, let there be light. There was darkness representing like Lucifer again. Let there be light. And there was light. And that power separated the light from the darkness. They can't coexist together. 
in a holy convocation darkness cannot coexist with light in a holy convocation the sin and the debauchery cannot live in your life they cannot do it amen the power of god will run through your life and the devil cannot stand it the devil cannot stand in the picture he's not even in the picture oh hallelujah what shall we then say to these things if god be for us who can be against us you answer that for yourself lucifer could not do it no devil is going to be able to do it oh hallelujah so you know what happened in heaven you never did it you never did it he tried to get you to be on his side you never did it so how can you do it here but when you come on the face of the earth in your day and in your age the ignorance your front path your front path is what people are looking at that's what you are looking at yourself but elohim is not looking at that elohim knows you did not stand with lucifer elohim knows lucifer could not deceive you elohim knows your future is already history elohim knows you have already been formed into the word image of the son of god elohim knows that elohim knows you are loaded with power and time holy ghost power and no devil can stand before you elohim knows that and that's why he call a holy convocation for you to know that and experience that yourself so what do we find friends you may be saying as i'm closing out here glory to god amen glory to god amen 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 glory hallelujah hallelujah oh my try to show you what happened in eternity which is day number eight that's what day number one represents and that's what adam was living in the garden of eden the number eight represents an authority a power over lucifer over everything that confronts and challenges a power an authority a confession amen glory to god amen amen no survival walk no slave walk no prison bears Amen. Amen. The devil tried to bring it. Those who were in prison with him were kicked out with him. But those who were in the holy commission in heaven, no prison bears. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And so we come on the face of the earth. That's our history before God. We come on the face of the earth with a front path. And we go from here, from here, from there. When drugs, when prostitution, when whatever, or whatever it is. And they will take a look at us and say, Oh, this person here. But God knows. And one day, He catches you pulls you into an entire section just like he did before and here you are in church and the devil like he did in the garden of eden even though adam lived in eternity in eden the devil still comes to try to introduce sin there and that's what he does with you and sin is a deception you don't want sin no you don't want sin you don't want the field you don't want the ungodliness is a deceiver sin deceived you romans 7 says how does it deceive you through your emotions let me give you an example i say that brother is a very stupid boy and you feel bad at me do the words hurt you no but you feel bad because your emotions are hurt your emotions are hurt Husband's hot at the wife. Wife's hot at the husband. Brother's hot at brother. Sister's hot at sister. That's the deception. The emotion is deceiving you that you are hot. You are not hurt. Because on the back part of Elohim's mind is only good. And that's where you come from. Oh, hallelujah. So, what are we saying here? You never did in the first place. So, here we are. The Holy Spirit is dropping upon us to bring us to the spot on the face of this earth here to where truly we will never do in the first place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm done. I'm finished. But my closing remarks here. Amen. As you go through this convention here, young man, young woman, this is what you want to know. The holy convocation is a power that comes into your life to separate the light from the darkness. Amen. To turn your evening into morning. To turn your night into day. To give you a brand new day. The evening become the morning. The night become the morning. Your darkness become morning. Oh, your weakness becomes strength. Hallelujah. Your fear becomes courage. That's the power that's in the house right now. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Oh, brother. I am done. Pianist, organist. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? If God be for us, who can be against us? Turn to your neighbor and say, Who God be for you? Who can be against you? Oh, yeah. So here we come, friends. My closing remarks. Here we come with a promise. There's another holy time coming. And if the holy convocation is promised us. What is it, friends? It's a promise of power. Amen. To turn your night into day. It's a promise of power. To bring on for you a brand new day. It's a promise of power to create sons of God. Amen. In the full stature of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like in the first Eden. Oh my. A promise of power to break your prison doors. So you do no serve our work therein. Is a promise of power. Amen. To the firstborn family. Amen. To change your confession from weakness to strength, from fear to courage, from night to day. Oh, glory. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The power to break your shackles. The power to bring you to the spot where you'll be justified you'll stand justified and you'll never do in the first place and you will never do in the first place and that's the part that brings you to adoption time so you'll never do in the first place God bless you God bless you oh God Oh, 
for fire. Let's sing it again. All on now. All glory. All power to you. All on now. All glory. All power. Hey. Holy Father. Holy Precious Jesus, my Savior, Spirit, yeah. Holy Spirit, the fire. Music plays. That's long. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Lord, we worship you, Lord. We wait on you, Jesus. Father, we love you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain To break every chain There's an army rising up There's an army Every 
chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. You love the Lord today. Give the Lord a hand of praise. You appreciate that message this morning. In the evening and the morning was the first day. God bless you, Brother Olu. What a blessing it has been to be here today. And it isn't over as yet. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. As we get ready to pick up this morning's Tyson offering, let's just sing that song. Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, singing Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, singing Hosanna, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, singing Hosanna. our heads oh heavenly father we just bring this morning's tithes and offering before you we pray a bless those that give those lord provide for those who don't have to give lord lord may be used for the furtherance of your gospel lord i pray that even as we leave this place in a little while that your holy spirit will continue to be with us lord lord keep us ever in your presence lord in jesus precious name we pray amen Oh, sing and Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. We didn't let the devil win, oh, we didn't let the devil win, oh, we didn't let the devil win, oh, we didn't let the devil win. So we sing and Hosanna, sing and Hosanna, and you mean it, Hosanna. and preaching praise. Oh, you see, I 
sing of my demon all along the way. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. You see, I sing of my redeemer. Oh, oh there is joy, joy in my soul. Let's sing it this way. I've got joy on speakable and full of glory. Yet been told up. Oh, I have got joy unspeakable and full of glory. It is full. I said it's full. Oh, I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Have never yet been told up. Oh, singing this joy that I have. The music. Let me hear you sing. This joy that I have. Oh, this joy. Ah, oh, man. Sounds good. This joy that I have. Oh, the world didn't give it all together. Let's go. Oh, singing this joy that I have. Like a river, I've got joy. Like a river, I've got joy. Like a river in my soul, I've got joy. Like a river, like a river, I've got joy. Like, let's take it up one more time. Oh, I've got joy. Like a river, I've got joy. King, oh, man, we are going, oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King, hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see, there is a no more crying there, we are going to see the King, oh, no more crying. Going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, soon and very. Oh, we are going. Yes, yeah, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Oh, soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Let's listen to the music. Put your hands together. Walking with the king, 
I'm walking with the King. Oh, I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah. I am walking with the King. Every day I am walking with the King. Oh, I said my friends don't like me because I am walking with the King. I am. Lord. You love the Lord today? Are you tired? This is the last day. I, I will tell you, the brothers say Trinidad is far, Nigeria is far, Ghana is far. There is no way you can come all this distance and don't worship with me. There's no way you can come from so far and don't praise with me. We got to praise a little. We got to worship. We got to worship King Lamb a little bit more, a little longer. Can we worship a little bit more? Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I live my burden down. Let's sing like this. I said I'm feeling so much better. So much better than I felt yesterday and the day before. Since I live my burden down. I said I'm feeling so much better since I laid my burdens down. Mm -hmm. You love the Lord today? Mm -hmm. You're gonna leave your burdens down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I said, leave all of your burdens down by the riverside and choose to carry them no more let's give the Lord a hand of praise hallelujah yes Lord we praise your holy name thank you Jesus Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. He alone is worthy to worship and adore the Lamb of God, victorious, my Redeemer. hand raised let's sing it back to him oh he alone is worth to worship and to 
worship him. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We worship you. Lord, you are so magnificent, so mighty, Lord. You are great. There is none like you. Nobody could do the things you do. We exalt your holy name. be the name of the Lord what a service this morning what a word from the Lord as brother Branham taught us Abraham faith Isaac love Jacob grace and drew the perfection what you heard this morning was Jewish perfection a revelation of Jewish perfection to prove and show there's nothing against you the back part cancels out the front part that's why God said that Paul said who can lay and charge to God's elect Amen. it is God that justify Amen. and that word justify is as if you never did it we, we're not talking about forgiven now we're talking about being justified as if you never did it that is a consciousness and a revelation and awareness that God has to break upon his elect that you could be aware that you are going back into the Adamic condition as if you are going right back you are going right back before the fall before you slip before you slide before your backslide before anything happened to you you're going right back before that isn't it beautiful this evening 
Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Give me up your seats before we close off. Just want to welcome, praise the name of the Lord. You play Holy Spirit right now. You can play Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, pray. Praise God. We, today we want to greet and welcome Pastor Brent Jero and his family. What about Brent is that? God bless you, Brother Brent. Thanks for coming. And we want to welcome also the believers from the Eagles Gathering Fellowship but the Waldron's Church. I believe a lot of them are here. God bless you. And welcome praise the lord and we have a brother joseph uh, benjamin i believe and lisa uh, sister lisa allen we're visiting from lighthouse bible tabernacle in new jersey usa where they are praise the god bless you and welcome to the headstone tabernacle praise the name of the lord and also we have some believers here from brother wilson's church where they are praise the name of the god bless you brothers but do and his wife praise the name of the lord he was part of the building process of this tabernacle god bless you my brother and sister god bless you praise the lord amen amen praise the name of the lord so we want to bow our heads and close our eyes and with a prayer father god we thank you for your presence lord we thank you for your love we thank you for your man servant brother ulu Pastor Ulu, Lord Jesus, that you had visited him and strengthened him. We knew his strength. It was such an unfolding revelation today that brought clarity to what the prophet brought, Lord. It make more sense to it. Father, we thank you for him and his wife, his family, his church. God, we thank you for them being able to come here and bless the elect and those that connected us on the internet, that it bless them also, Father. God, may you visit the people, bless their love feast, Father, and as we come back here this evening, may you be here to visit the sick and heal the sick and to break every chain and to break every fetter father give us a tremendous climax this evening father and be with your people even now in jesus name we ask it amen. amen praise god come forward again oh, Holy Spirit Rain now Let your power fall Let your voice be heard Come and change your hearts as we stand on your word Holy Spirit rain down Holy Spirit rain down oh, Stand on your word, Holy Spirit, rain down, Holy Spirit, rain down, oh, rain.
spirit let it fire your fall fill us one and all fall fresh on me fire fall fill us one and all fall fresh on me